Hey everybody, how's it going? Stunner Dave here, and oh my goodness, I've been so swamped at work, so I finally got a day off after two weeks, so I'm really going to enjoy this little bit of time off. Uh, so, last video I did, I was talking about my favorite circuit, and I was actually meaning that to be just a sidestep, I was talking about how simple amplifiers are. So, I put together the simplest amplifier that I could think of. A uh, single transistor amplifier. And uh, I was going to talk about that because, you know, this is like the simplest amplifier to, to build and, and do modifications to. But then I was like, but it's not my favorite circuit. I like it and it's fun, but it's more of a uh, demonstration of transistors than actually a, a favorite circuit for me. I mean, to quote an asshole, it doesn't even have a 555 timer in it. So, instead, what I've made is something a little bit more, well, a little bit funner. It's got blinking lights on it. So, that definitely makes it fun. Uh, and what it is, is it, it's a type of transistor tester, right? So, I have a program on my computer that I can plug transistors in, run a real quick test, and it'll tell me essentially every single thing about the transistor, like, more accurate than the data sheet, right? which most people will just go with the data sheet because that's good enough. But what this is is a little circuit that works as a test for transistors. And what it does, it does two different things. Uh, it'll identify on an NPN or a PNP transistor. So for those of you that don't know, there are basically two different types of transistor as far as the bipolar junction transistor, the BJT. There's NPNs, NPNPs. And on schematics, you'll see that it'll call for one or the other. Now, this circuit will identify a PNP, an NPN, and it'll identify a, a defective transistor. So, now, before I go and show you the circuit in action, let's take a look at the schematic real quick. Okay, so here is the circuit in its final form. You can see here, these are indicator lights right here. These diodes right here are used to control some currents. And uh, we got the different connections. I have a uh, red cord going to the spot labeled emitter got this blue cord going to the spot labeled base and I have this green cord here connected to the spot labeled emitter so we have collector base emitter going on to these pins right here I have it powered and I have a switch set up right here to turn the circuit off and on <clears throat> so now just a little bit of a what I have set up here right now these transistors right here um, this row right here, these transistors are all the same. Basic 3904s, uh, NPN transistors. Uh, nothing really special about them. They're the most basic, right? And when I turn the circuit on, these two lights should start flashing because there's nothing here that could possibly allow any current to flow through. So... This is your basic NPN transistor. I'm plugging it into the positions. I turn the switch on. The green light flashes. Green flashing indicates that you have an NPN transistor and that you have it hooked up the proper direction. Collector, base, emitter. Now this should be the same. You can see nothing's plugged in. They're both flashing. This should be the same transistor. And we're going to assume that all of them are the same setup because that's your basic, most common setup. So we're going to plug it in and the green light flashes, the red light's off. Unplug it, the red light comes on. It's kind of hard to see it from my end because the green light flashes so much brighter than the red anyways. But uh, from up above on the camera, I could see that when I unplug this, the red light clearly flashes. 
You can see it better when I cover the green, but there you go there. So NPN identified again. This is an NPN as well. Like I said, all four of these are all the same. So you can see they all respond exactly the same. But these guys aren't all the same. One of them is the same, but two of them are different. One of these is an NPN, and one of them is another uh, order of uh, pins on it. And uh, I don't really know which is which because, well, I'm fucking high. I'm going to start with this middle one, though. Start with the middle one. It seems suspicious. Plug it in the same way. Holy shit. I must have found the 3904. Or, yeah, 3904. It's the same as these guys. So these two are different. I don't know which is which, but we'll find out. Look at that, the green light's off, but the red light's on. See the red light on? Red light flashing means we have a PNP transistor. Same setup, that's still the collector base and emitter, but it's, an op the opposite light's on, means it's opposite polarity. Now this one is the last one, it's completely different. So I'm gonna plug it in the same way both of the lights stay the same. They're still on. I'm going to turn it around the other direction, though. All right. So if we look at this here, see it's got the rounded side on this side and the flat side over here. That's the flat side. That's the round side. So when I have the flat side facing towards me, we have collector base emitter. All right, so the way this circuit works is it's, uh, basically it's an A-stable multivibrator or A-stable oscillator created by the, uh, the RC circuit going along pins two and six. And of course, it's typically that connection would go to pin seven, I believe, with a voltage divider there going to, to the source. But in this case, it's being fed from the output pin of the 555, which does create a little bit of a different frequency than what you would expect with the with the setup, but it also creates the uh, the voltages that we need to make the circuit work in the way that we're going to make it work. Now, the oscillator is not really that important. Um, it does play a part here when we... Uh, when we're actually looking at at the uh, transistor circuit. So the oscillator makes a circuit and then the trans that pin three is an output pin feeding into the input of this circuit. So we look at the voltage of pin three and that's going to change. It's gonna go up and down. Um, I believe, but I'm not quite certain, but I think it goes up and down by like the nine volt. So it, it switches from being positive reference to negative reference in relationship to the, the voltage divider that comes after pin three. So there are, are um, four 220 ohm resistors along the output. So between the positive and negative roll, rails, there's a voltage divider there. And that'll set a reference for the voltage for this circuit of positive 4.5 volts. And we're gonna reference this as being the positive voltage only because the collector is there, right? So, and we're, I'm gonna talk about the NPN where the green LED will come on, all right? So, this positive 4.5 volts, there's a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a, a, it's basically a clipping circuit. Um, and what it is, is uh, a circuit is above uh, 0.7 volts in reference to uh, the collector. It'll allow voltage, and if it's below that point, so it has to be below negative 
0.7. It'll allow voltage to fly the other direction. That's going to come in a talk when we start talking about the PMP transistors. But looking at the NPN transistors right now, which will make the green LED flash, the red LED stay off. So positive voltage there when that's above 0.7. It'll get noticed. The uh, other one, the other diode there will stay off. But that voltage between this 4.5 to the collector will, will be maximum of 0.7, right? Which is the diode voltage. Which means the collector voltage here, since we have that 4.5 volt uh, voltage divider, right? Because we have that voltage divider there. That 0.7 is going to mean that we go 4.5 minus 0.7, 3.8-ish volts. And that's going to be uh, the collector voltage. Now, we also happen to have a, uh, a voltage divider going to pin 3. Now, when pin 3 is low... There's going to be a, a voltage going through there of, let's have 4.5, 2.25 volts going on the, the base. This is when the green LED is off. The green LED will go off when current, no, it'll go on when current's flowing through the collector, which means that pin three would be low. So yeah, that would, that would go right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> All right, and then of course, we're talking about pin three being low. Green LED is off at this point. No, low. LED is, comes on and low, 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 current goes through. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so this voltage being low is gonna cause the capacitor to charge up. And I know it's gonna cause it to discharge to cause the cause the oscillation time there so pin three low voltage at base turns on the collector current flows there led is off circuit goes off pin three goes high pin three goes high the voltage across the 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 base goes well, it goes essentially to a negative number from, from where it was, but the nine volts creating that 4.5 volts here still has that nine volt reference. So it's gonna be 8.6, I think is what, 8.3. 8, 8 yeah, 8.3 with the nine volts there. So we get 8.3 going to 4.3. There's a current, but it's going the other direction now. It turns the, 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 uh, the transistor off, which is going to allow a higher voltage to form here. Green LED turns on. No, green LED turns off. There's no, no, the voltage is going higher here, so it can't flow. Higher voltage, lower voltage, current flows this way. Green LED comes on. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> Crazy shit, right? So, Essentially, green LED comes on when when uh, gets triggered to turn on when pin three goes high, and it turns the LED turns off when pin three goes low, and the voltage there at the collector. The reason why it, it doesn't go to the negative voltage to turn on the red LED like it normally would, like when you don't have anything plugged in, the red LED flashes on too. And that's because when pin three goes low, that 4.5 volt reference there that's at that, uh, with the LED, with the transistor in there, the, the, the voltage difference doesn't happen. When pin three goes low, the transistor will turn on and it, it'll go low there as well. So it's low on both sides. So when it count, turns high, it creates a condition where the transistor turns off, the voltage at the collector goes high, and there's no 
because both voltages are the same, no current flows at all. But when there's no transistor in there, well, when the thing goes low, the voltage here is high, the, the red transistor. When it goes high, the voltage here is lower than that, the other LED turns on. So with no transistor in there, both LEDs flash. But the transistor in there, if it's the NPN, only the green one will flash. And that's when it goes high. When it goes high, the current will go through it. When it goes low, the transistor turns on and both sides are low until it goes high again. So that's why the LED will flash when it goes high. Now with the PNP, it kind of works the same way, but the opposite. So with the PNP, when pin 3 goes high, the transistor turns on. And LED, the red LED will not have power because it, it's, no oh wait, no, it will have power because the, it turns on, the collector goes high and you get your, your uh, nine volts there or your zero volts, whatever you want to call it. And no, no transistor comes on because everything's zero or everything's high when it's high. Then when it goes low, the red LED comes on because the collector now goes to that 4.5 positive volts comes on. But then when it goes high, transistor turns on and it, everything, no, transistor turns off, no. And PNP, we want high voltage on the emitter, high voltage turns the transistor on, brings our collector voltage will go high, right, high. The base voltage is still, still there, right? So, NPN. I think the NPN, when it goes high, it goes high and the transistor turns off and when it goes low, this goes to the 4.5, which is high, which gets a current going through it, which is why the NPN flashes the red light. And of course, with no circuit, with no transistor in place, we just got that 4.5 volts there. And when it goes high, the, the one goes higher and turns the green on. When it goes low, the red turns on because it's gone lower. It's kind of neat, but rather redundant to keep explaining it more than this. All right. So there we've got the circuit explained. Now... Like I said at the beginning, this is going to come in handy for talking about building a simple transistor amplifier. So I'm going to do that video right now and you'll be able to take a look at it and I'll, I'll tell you about modifications and what they are and what they mean. All right. Peace out.